Hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we are revisiting the concept of area, uh, and we're going to expand our understanding of that concept in two ways. One, we're going to explore how to find the area of a rectangle involving larger digit numbers in their uh, measurements. And two, we're going to look at finding the areas of figures, which is the title of our math journal lesson today. Because not all figures are rectangles, right? We're in our math journal on page uh, 135, unit 4, lesson 11. So problem number one, you can see, says find the area of the following shapes or objects. Well, this shape is a rectangle. That's easy enough. And if you recall, the formula for area of a rectangle is area A equals length times width. So A equals L times W. So in this problem right here, uh, you would have to multiply the length of the rectangle, 25 centimeters, by the width of the rectangle, 15 centimeters. So your equation with the unknown would be 25 times 15, let's put in those units, shall we, equals, let's just say A for the unknown, because A is for area, okay? So with that, you would set up the problem either using partitioning rectangles or you would use the uh, uh, partial products approach. So let me set up the problem, uh, partitioning rectangle style. And with a partitioned rectangle, I would have to have four boxes because 25 is two tens and five ones. And 15 is one ten and five ones. If you were to go ahead and multiply those numbers together, you would find all the partial products and add them together. Or you could take 25 times 15 and set up the algorithm like so, and then break it down this way. 25 is 20, or two tens, and five ones, and I would multiply them each by 10. And then I would do the same thing again, 20 and five times the ones, which is five. So 20 times 10, 5 times 10. 20 times 5, 5 times 5. Now doing the actual calculations, I think, is well within your wheelhouse. So that's not what I'm going to focus on in this video. What I want to focus on is problem number 3. Okay? Study the figure below. It is a plan for a new computer lab at Pond Cove School. The school's principal needs to determine how much carpet will be needed to cover the floor. This is a perfect area problem because as a homeowner, I often have to look at my flooring choices and decide how do I want to redo my floor? Do I want to use ceramic tile? Do I want to use laminate? Do I want to use a vinyl plank, uh, hardwood? What would I want to do here? And then I have to decide how much space I have to cover. Now, as you can see, this is not a rectangle although it does have some rectangular properties. So it takes a visual eye to kind of see how we can approach this problem, okay? And actually, there's about three different ways we could approach this problem, and they all do involve rectangles. So I'm going to use a little uh, uh, copy and paste tool in my uh, Explain Everything app, and I'm going to make a copy. And then I'm going to make another copy. So now we see them side by side by side. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is think about what we do know how to do, which is multiply uh, length times width to find the area of a rectangle, which is the formula up here. So I'm going to rewrite that formula over here in the corner just to remind us. A equals L times W, right? So if I look at this first shape here, I can see it's got some squ 
square corner, so there's some rectangular properties to it, but it seems like, uh, uh, like a big chunky letter U. So I can approach this uh, in a number of ways. The first thing I can do is I can see how many rectangles I can carve out of the shape. So I have this left side right here, I have this right side right here, and then I've got this middle section right here. So what I can do is I can just cut this space into smaller rectangles. So if I go like this, and go like this, I've made myself three rectangles, okay? And let me shade those in so they're easy to see. So here's a rectangle, and then here's a rectangle, and here's a rectangle, okay? So the first rectangle that I've labeled in green, you can see the uh, formula uh, or I see the uh, measurements that fit very well into the formula. It is 4 feet long by 10 feet wide. So in order to uh, find the area of this section of the, the classroom, I would just multiply 4 times 10. And of course, that would give us 40. 40 what? That would be 40 feet squared. Okay? So now I look at the other two parts. And yes, this one in yellow looks kind of squarish. And, and uh, you astute uh, geometry fans would know that a square is just a form or a uh, type of rectangle. All squares are rectangles, not every rectangle is a square. And we have the uh, length, which is 5 feet, but we're not sure about the width. But we have uh, other measurements that we can use to deduce or kind of figure out the, the missing measurements. So if this entire shape is 10 feet wide, that means that the distance between the top right here and the bottom right here is also 10 feet. And we can see that this portion right here of the length of the side here to here is five feet. So I can figure out the distance between here and here by subtracting 10 feet minus five feet. And of course, 10 minus five is five feet. So this side would also be five feet. So the formula I would use to find out the yellow portion would be, of course, the length, 5 feet, times the width, which would give me 25 feet squared. And then I would just figure out the last portion right here, 5 feet times the width, which of course is also going to be 10 feet, because that's the same measurement on the other side. So the formula for this portion would be 5 times 10, which of course is going to give you 50 feet squared. So this is where your partial products uh, approach comes into play, because I now have three partial products, 4 times 10, 5 times 5, and 5 times 10. So I would add those three together to uh, get my total amount, okay? And I'll let you do that legwork. But this is only one way to approach this problem. Here's another way we can look at this problem. I could look at this shape here, and instead of cutting uh, the lengths vertically, I could cut them horizontally, like this. And as you can see, I have one big rectangle down at the bottom, right here. And then I have two side rectangles here. In here. And again, it's just a matter of finding the area of these particular rectangles. Now this first one in yellow, I can already see is 5 times 5. And 
and that would give me, of course, 25 feet squared. And I know this one right here in green would be 4 times 5. 4 times 5 equals 20 feet squared. Okay. And then I'm left with this last rectangle, which is 14 feet long. And as we determine the other uh, shape, that this space between here and here is also 5 feet. So my formula for figuring out this portion would be 14 feet times 5. Now, 10 times 5 is 50. 4 times 5 is 20. So 14 times 5 would be 70 feet. And that would be squared. So again, you would f take those three amounts, 20 plus 25 plus 70, and add them all together to get your total product or your total area. Now the last way we would approach this problem is a little different and this uh, I would borrow from some things I learned in art class and I look at this space and I think to myself well what is this shape? Well I could see it as a series of rectangles as we've done in the first two examples or I can think about what we call the negative space. And the negative space is basically the part that was uh, basically cut out. If you look at this space right here, it looks like uh, a bite has been taken out of it, like if you took a bite out of a cookie. This space right here is what we would call the negative space. Okay, and let me shade that in. And that negative space is what we would subtract from the uh, the total area of this rectangle that is 14 feet long by 10 feet wide. So to figure out the space of this area, I just have to first figure out what the total space would be if no negative space existed and then subtract uh, the difference from that space in the middle. So 14 times 10 well, this is going to give me 140 because 14 times 1 with a 0 is going to give me 14 with a 0. So 140 feet squared. And then this blue square is 5 times 5. So in order to solve this problem here, I would take 140 feet squared and then subtract 25 feet squared. That difference is my area, the area of the room that I would not need to lay down carpet. And all three of these approaches are valid ways to find out the area of this shape. So when you get to uh, the equations part, you have to first pick an approach, one, two, or three, and then describe that approach, okay? And all three approaches should give you the same answer, okay? Now, finally, they say in B, they ask you to find the perimeter, and this is where kids get tripped up, because they see a shape, they see measurements, they're asked to find the area and they think perimeter or they are asked to find the perimeter and they switch it in their heads and they give you the area okay so perimeter is the total length of the outside measurements so in a rectangle it would be length plus length plus width plus width but in these shapes we have more sides okay if you count the number of sides okay i've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what you would do is your formula for the perimeter 
is to add the eight sides. So my formula here, or my equation, would be side number one plus side two plus side three plus side four plus side five and I bet you're getting the gist here. So your job for this problem would be to take all of the sides and add them together. Now as you and I saw when we were figuring out the area portion of this problem, some of the sides aren't clearly labeled. So we have to come up with our own measurements, like right here. We deduced that if the left side is 10 feet, then the right side of the shape is also going to be 10 feet. Okay? So you have now all the tools needed to complete this math journal uh, activity. Now notice, I have not provided you any answers this time, just the tools to get to the answers. Uh, it is my job as a math teacher, whether it be virtually through YouTube or in the classroom, to give kids the tools they need to do things for themselves. Now, you could always rely on Mr. Wassman to do it for you, but then what would you do when you're standing in Home Depot and Lowe's uh, as adults trying to figure out how much carpet you need to carpet your living room and you didn't have the tools needed to figure that out? So try these problems on your own. Uh, I am sure that you will be able to figure it out if you just follow the steps. And of course, if you have questions, you need to reach out to your math teachers uh, to have them help you. Because you know what? While you're a fourth grader, they are happy to help you. Once you're an adult out on your own, it's a whole different story. So take advantage of this resource in your math teacher while you have it. Okay? Until we speak again, have a good day.